Herkese iyi akşamlar. Hepiniz hoş geldiniz. Ufak gecikmemiz için kusura bakmayın lütfen. Ee, i̇smim Safa Doğru, British Education Bureau'nun İzmir Bölge Müdürü'yüm. Ee, henüz bizimle tanışmamış olabilecek öğrencilerimiz için bir iki cümleyle e, Bebi anlatıp sonra sözü hızlıca Bristol Üniversitesi yetkilimiz Olga'yı bırakacağım. BEP bundan 20 sene önce Oxford'da kuruldu. İngiliz ve Türk yöneticilere sahip bir yapısı var BEP'in. 20 yıldır da İstanbul, Ankara ve İzmir'deki ofislerimizden öğrencilerimizi, yaklaşık 6 bin öğrencimiz aslında, Birleşik Krallık'taki üniversitelerine yolcu etmiş bulunuyoruz. Uzmanlık alanımız tabii ki Birleşik Krallık'taki eğitim sistemi, üniversitelerin giriş şartları, başvuru aşaması, vize aşaması gibi e, tüm süreci kapsayan aşamalar, e, tüm danışman kadromuz Birleşik Krallık'taki eğitim sistemine tamamen hakim, e, bu konuda yeterli eğitimi almış ve kendini sürekli geliştirmeye devam eden çok değerli arkadaşlarımızdan oluşuyor. E, bugün bizi bilgilendirecek e, Bristol Üniversitesi de dahil olmak üzere 90'dan fazla Birleşik Krallık Üniversitesi'nin Resmi temsilciliğini yapıyoruz ve temsilciliğini yaptığımız bu üniversitelerimiz için sizlere ücretsiz bir hizmet sağlıyoruz. E, aynı zamanda bu üniversitelerimizin Türkiye'deki tanıtımlarını yapıyoruz ve bu akşam olduğu gibi e, sizlerle buluşmalarına olanak sağlıyoruz. Ekranda gördüğünüz sosyal medya hesaplarımızdan bizi takip ederseniz bundan sonraki organizasyonlarımız konusunda da önden bilgi sahibi olabilirsiniz. Şimdi daha fazla... Ee, sözü uzatmadan Olga'ya bırakıyorum. Olga'nın sunumu sonrasında oluşabilecek sorularınızı da alıyor olacağız. Okay Olga, now I will be passing it on to you. Great, thank you so much. Um, I will try and share the presentation screen. Um, please let me know if you can see it. Yep, we can. Amazing. Great, so let's move on. Um, so I'll give you a quick introduction on writing a personal statement and introduction to the University of Bristol and the city, and then we will dive in into the application process and some tips for personal statements at undergraduate level, as well as the postgraduate level. So let me get into my presentation slide deck. So um, my name is Olga Hill and I work here at the University of Bristol. And if you have any questions, uh, you can always pose them down at the Zoom um, section. And uh, if you have questions afterwards um, about your individual case and so on, feel free to email me at the email address um, displayed here on the screen. And um, you will see the email address at the end of the presentation again. So don't worry about this. So for today's agenda, so I'll give you a brick, brick, quick overview of the Bristol, the programs we offer, the faculties and schools, the application process, and then we will dive into the personal statement um, slides. Um, and hopefully there will be some time left for the questions as well. So yes, use the chat function here and you can email us directly if you want to or ask the team at the BEB. So Bristol in a nutshell, so Bristol consistently ranks in the world top 100 um, and UK top league table. So we are top 10 in the UK and 61 in the world. We continually invest in our cutting edge technology facilities um, and so on to help students choose the best university option. Um, so uh, we are the most popular university here in the UK and hopefully you will be able to join our amazing student community as well. So in terms of the history, we um, have a great uh, reputation for admitting women for the as the first university um, in the UK on the equal basis with men. And in 2019, we were the first university to declare a climate emergency. And we are also a Russell Group University, um, so um, it's a, which represents 24 leading universities in the UK, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, so we focus on amazing challenges and our curriculum is so informed by the latest research developments and the academics that we um, have here working for the University of Bristol and teaching our amazing students. Um, our curriculum and program content is developed, as I mentioned, by our world leading academics working at the forefront of their academic fields, providing our students access to the latest skills and knowledge. And we are rated in the top 10 best institutions for teaching in Europe. And our strong industry partnerships mean that our students have access to collaborative networks, to trading opportunities, um, uh, work placements and resources, both while studying here as well as after the graduation. 
So um, in terms of our programs and courses that we offer, we have six um, fantastic faculties. So we teach across the arts, engineering, health sciences, life sciences, anything related to biomedical programs, as well as the core science subjects and then the business subjects, social sciences and law. Um, the um, popular courses and study levels um, in Turkey. So we actually have Turkish students coming across all study levels, starting from the foundation program for those students who actually didn't meet the entry criteria for our bachelor programs, or if your school, for example, doesn't grant you direct entry onto our undergraduate program. So students can complete the foundation program first, then students um, can study at the undergraduate level and majority of programs in the UK take normally three years to complete. And then we um, continue at studies um, for master's level as well as the PhD. Um, and we have also some students coming from Turkey to complete pre-sessional programs um, before they start their degree course. And the popular programs, as we've noticed so far, surprisingly, um, the students um, choose from Turkey, law, business subjects, as well as engineering subjects and at postgraduate level, Surprisingly, lots of you decide to study science, which is absolutely fantastic. So engineering programs, science subjects, as well as the health sciences, um, it's a very, very great mix. Um, and it, uh, it's amazing to see that and our academics love that. In terms of the location, I'm not sure if you are familiar with Bristol, but hopefully um, you will be able to identify quickly where London is located and where Bristol is. We're so lucky to be located in a vibrant, dynamic city with a reputation for creativity, sustainability, and students just fall in love with Bristol. It's a small city, enough to remain friendly, but large enough to offer a lot of interest and excitement. And our main campus overlooks the city centre and harbour site, an ideal location from which to explore the city. And Bristol has been judged to be the best place to live outside of London for young people, looking at various metrics, including availability of public transport, as well as the cost of living. So nestled in the southwest of the UK, Bristol is the eighth largest city in the UK. And we've got amazing connections um, to other parts of the UK. And we also have an airport so you can fly to other European destinations if you wish to. So applying to Bristol um, and the application process. So uh, it's really, really easy. For most programs, you apply through the university website. Um, and for undergraduate programs, the application process is managed via the UCAS application system. But here are the links that will eventually take you to the relevant pages for the application information so that you can find more um, on how to apply and so on. And you can see here in the blue box the entry requirements that we need for um, specific countries as well, if you're applying from um, Turkey using your Turkish qualifications. At undergraduate level, we do accept Turkish qualifications as well as the mainstream qualifications such as International Baccalaureate Diploma or A-levels. Um, and that criteria is very easily uh, published and found online for each programme. Also to say that in most cases we do um, accept your IGCC results or if you have done specific uh, programs in your IB diploma for English, we do accept those instead of IELTS so you don't have to worry about your IELTS if you have completed the um, international qualification already. Also, please double check if there are any additional uh, tests required. So, for example, for law, we ask for the LNAT test, and for example, for medicine and dentistry, we also ask for the UCAT test. Other universities, for example, might ask for the BMAT if you're applying for medicine and dentistry. And we, I definitely recommend to read the admission statement. So this will allow you to see how important are your grades and how uh, tests are being um, added into the consideration and how important is your personal statement. And I also suggest you check in advance how each university will assess your application and the importance of the personal statement. To give you more information, um, stay uh, well connected. So I will show you how exactly each programs differ in terms of the personal statement um, assessment. So in terms of the um, entry requirements, as I mentioned, the IB qualifications A-levels are easily uh, published on the website. But then for Turkish students, if you are applying with the Anatolian diploma or the science diploma, we do accept those for direct entry. And if you're applying with the mainstream um, high school diploma, so we normally ask for grades between 74 to 85%. Some subjects and some competitive programs might ask for slightly higher grades, but that's the kind of average entry requirement that we have. And for postgraduate programs, we normally ask for a bachelor degree with a minimum GPA of 3.1 or above. 
and then the exact uh, requirements for each program will tell you if there are any individual differences that you need to take into account. For example, some programs will ask for higher mathematical ability or statistical ability and things like that, that you can also check in advance. So in terms of the application process, the applications are open and the undergraduate applications, as I mentioned, should be submitted via the UCAS website. So as many undergraduate students possibly will be aware that if you are applying to universities such as Oxford or Cambridge, and if you are applying for programs like medicine, dentistry or veterinary sciences, if you would like to be a doctor, you need to submit your application by the 15th of October. But there is a caveat to that. As I mentioned, we do accept the UCAT test. That means you should have registered for that test before this. And then for the uh, other program, majority of the programs and other universities, your deadline for this year is 25th of January 2023. But be aware, it stops at 6 p.m. UK time. <clears throat> and for the postgraduate applications, you can apply via our online application form. So um, here is the link. And then the deadline for most programs is July. However, some of our most popular programs will close early, and they did close quite early last year, as early as January. So if you are planning to apply for a master program, uh, submit your application um, or prepare as soon as possible. So just to give you a quick overview of what you can find online and how important the personal statement is as part of your application process. For example, let's look into the law program for undergraduate studies. So this is a quick snapshot from our website. So when you look into the course descriptor and lower down uh, when you scroll on the website, you will eventually get to the entry requirements where, as I mentioned, where you can easily see that you need, for example, so many points like 38 IB points and 18 uh, points at high level if you are completing the International Baccalaureate Diploma. And here you can quickly see what do you require in terms of the English language? And let's say for the IELTS, we ask for seven overall with seven in writing, 6.5 in relevant skills. Or if you have done GCSEs or, or any alternative qualification, you can click the link and see what grades we also accept in that international qualification. So it's very easy to find all this information. Then you can eventually get to the law admission statement. And I strongly, strongly recommend you check the admission statement for each program you're planning to apply. I assume majority of other universities in the UK have the admission statement published as well for transparency and for clarity to give you the best advice before you apply. So when you open the law admission statement, for example, you will see the following information that the admissions process looks like this. The applications are scored and ranked based on their academic record. So in most cases, your grades will have the, the highest weighting. And then the LNAT test is weighted as 40% as part of the admissions criteria. It doesn't say anything about the personal statement, right? However, if you scroll down, this is where I got this information from. If you scroll down later, you will see how important is the LNAT test, how to apply for it, and how exactly we assess it. And then later, again, within that admission statement, you will see how important is the personal statement um, as part of your application and what is the criteria. So what we do say, we may refer to the personal statement and reference to differentiate between applicants with similar academic profiles. And in these cases, we use the following criteria. Interest um, in and a commitment to law, evidence of analytical thinking, communication skills and independent thinking, and evidence of ability to face challenges, academic stamina and commitment to tasks. This widely and massively differs from how universities in America assess applications. To give you another example, I have chosen one of the most popular programs, medicine. Again, so to show you quickly how we assess the applications for medicine, check on the admission statement, and then you will see that we look into the uh, academic grades first. So after we've uh, assessed your academic grades and suitability, your predicted grades, we then look into the UCA test, the medical aptitude test. Um, the results are delivered to us in around uh, November time. And after that, students will be selected for an interview. So the top scoring applicants will be invited to the MMIs or the multiple mini interviews, which will take uh, between December and March. 
And here is the quote for the personal statement. We no longer use the personal statement as a weighted component of our selected criteria. Should we need to differentiate between applicants who have identical scores at interview when making offers, the UCAT score will be used as our prim primary differentiator. And should there be a situation where applicants achieve the same interview result and the UCAT score, only then will the personal statement be used as a deciding factor. Again, this will gives you an idea how hard you should work on your personal statement, or it will be there as a differentiator in most cases. And I know many students possibly will be asking, what is the cutoff score um, in terms of the UCAT test? So here we go. So um, for the students who just started and joined us this September, so they applied for the September 2022 entry, um, for international students, the threshold was 2,910. Again, this information is available on the website and gives you a much realistic picture in terms of how feasible it is to get eventually an interview invitation um, at Bristol or not, if you are, let's say, applying for a medical program. I hope this is useful, but let's dive in into the personal statement advice, writing a personal statement. So um, here is a brief outline of what we are looking for. The UCAS application process will require you to submit a personal statement and other universities might look into a personal statement on a completely different basis. Again, check individual programs and check individual universities and how they assess personal statement. If it is, um, if it does have massive importance or not. But normally what we say, um, between 75 to 90% of your personal statement should outline your academic interest, your knowledge and exploration of the subject, and why you want to study at the university level. And the rest between 10 to 25% maximum, you can focus on your extracurricular activities, any other voluntary activities that um, you have um, done, for example. So um, why we need that? So we need to understand why you have chosen and applying for that specific program. What have you done to prepare uh, yourself for studies at the university level? And why are you as a student suitable for this specific course? We also would like to see whether you have the understanding of the subject or particular areas um, that interest you within engineering, for example, or sciences um, or social sciences or business. What are your career aspirations? Or maybe you have relevant academic or work experience or you volunteered and you can draw on your volunteering experience and um, align it with the uh, specific career aspirations. You can also um, talk more about your awareness of cultural or industrial affairs within the subject area you have chosen. But bear in mind, you have only 4,000 characters or 47 lines to write your personal statement. And that statement is sent to all five choices that you might have chosen on your UCAS application form. So you have to be quite careful and concise. The tips to remember what we normally say is start with a strong opening, but um, we also suggest to avoid very famous quotes. It does become quite cliche when you start reading those statements. Research a program and the course and keep it focused. Be honest, draft and redraft and proofread. And don't plagiarize. That's the advice that we normally give to students as well applying. So I'm going to keep the slide for a bit longer on the screen, just to give you an idea, an example on how some students, for example, write an introduction, let's say if they do apply for programs related to biomedical sciences, or how they elaborate and talk about their work experience that will be suitable for a program, let's say in biochemistry or in neuroscience. So I'll pause here a little bit. Good. I hope this gives you a bit of a flavor on how uh, you can structure your personal statement and how you can mention different things um, that you have conducted or what happened within your studies, academic life and personal life, and how you can tie it all in together and make it very relevant to your subject uh, choice um, as part of the application process. Let's move on. So if we have any postgraduate interested students here, let's talk about the postgraduate entry requirements. So again, 
uh, for postgraduate programs, the admissions criteria is clearly outlined for each specific program, but in most cases we look for a strong bachelor program um, qualification um, that you have completed in your home country, in Turkey, for example. The entry requirements do vary for each program, so do check the postgraduate program listings for details. There are also English language requirements um, clearly outlined. So you can have a look and see um, what IELTS, for example, grades would you require within um, that program. And that program also will have uh, their own admission statement published. So here is a link where lots and lots of admission statements are published for our programs uh, at the University of Bristol. And in general, schools and faculty websites will have a lot of useful information uh, for future applicants if you're applying, for example, for master's, master's program as a taught program for one year, or if you're applying for a master's by research for one year, or if you are applying for PhD studies and how the application process um, does differ and what you need to take into account and how you can prepare yourself. So the general advice is do your research first before you apply, understand the course structure. You may want to draw on this in your personal statement as well. Think who are the academics that you actually spotted on the website that you would like to work with and what kind of expertise they have um, in that relevant field. As I mentioned, the schools or faculty, you can also find information. Who are they? What are they rank? How successful are their graduates? How soon uh, do graduates find the jobs? Are they a specialist in their field of study? Are you happy with your choice? Would you like to come to that specific university and study in that city as well? So look into the recent news and campaigns. And if you want to uh, also follow school or department social media, you can get much more information um, in terms of what is going on in that specific school, department, research, and so on, um, different incentive activities, collaborations with the industry that will enhance your career prospects and, and give you better understanding whether you want to apply for that program or not. So in terms of the um, structure for your personal statement, Tell us more, why are you interested in this field of study? What is your personal background? What, it, what are your career goals? Um, what specific strengths do you have? And why are you interested in this specific course? An academic maybe you want to study with or a unique element to the course that attracted you when you looked into the course structure. Tell us why are you interested in this specific university, like Bristol, for example. Again, draw on your research that you may have done already as part of the website browsing. What are your career goals? How will the masters help you to achieve those, goal, those goals? And potentially discuss the initial ideas for your master's dissertation. Uh, maybe give us an idea of the specialist knowledge you have in your field or demonstrate how and why you are invested in this field of study with examples. Remember to relate back to your master's application and draw from the academic or maybe employment experience to explain why you are choosing to study this specific postgraduate program. Things to avoid, your personal statement needs to prove that you've got the, the determination and drive and relevant skills and experience to thrive at the university. Make sure you answer any questions that are possibly mentioned within the admission statement for that program. So please look into the admission statement and the, because the word limit, for example, may vary. Um, create a clear and concise structure beginning with the, with the beginning, a nice middle. Um, think about the attention grabbing introduction, engaging middle section, and then the concise conclusion. So we normally say maximum two of A4 pages or around 500 words. Um, so that should be sufficient for your personal statement. And again, remember, short and easy to read paragraphs are much better. And to use the emotive language, be passionate, be eager, be excited. However, stay professional and personable where possible. What we also <clears throat> say that uh, in terms of these things that you could potentially avoid, do not waffle, get straight to the point and say what you want to say. Do not use the same template for each application. It should be specific to your program. <coughs> and please do, don't be vague. Be specific about the facts and figures where possible. Excuse me, I'll have to have some water. <coughs> Out of practice, clearly. <clears throat> Check for typos and for any bad grammar. <clears throat> and also make sure that if you apply to the university, like Bristol, mention Bristol, not the University of Birmingham or, for example, University of Bradford or um, another institution, because that will look um, definitely really, really odd. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. 
<clears throat> you can also join us for the online events. Um, those events um, will give you much better flavor of the university, of the program you have chosen, um, and you can join different webinars. You can um, look into um, different um, programs online and have virtual tour and any recordings or website recordings that you might have on YouTube channel, for example, and course specific sessions. Um, even after you have applied, before you make your final decision, there will be lots and lots of sessions available for undergraduate students and postgraduate students you can join to get a much better understanding if you want to continue with your application and firm your place or not. <clears throat> Virtual tour um, also will allow you to explore uh, the facilities within the university to understand whether you want to stay within that faculty and the city and whether that will enhance your future career prospects. So yeah, in a nutshell, that's the information I wanted to mention. <laughs> and before I completely run off of my voice, I would like to give you an opportunity to ask any questions. Sorularınızı sohbetten de alabiliriz arkadaşlar isterseniz. Uh, they were asking whether you could provide some more information about the PhD applications. <coughs> Oh, good question. The PhD applications, what we normally say to students, do a good, good research for your program. <clears throat> and also, you need to make sure you identify the suitable academics that will potentially become your supervisors, one or two, ideally. You can see which academics are doing research within specific um, research groups. Because let's say you want to do something specific within engineering or health sciences or business or management or law, and we don't have a supervisor who actually focuses on your research area, but we do have other things. So again, you might want to study at Bristol, but we might not actually supervise you for that specific area. However, if you have identified clearly <clears throat> what you want to do, get in touch with those supervisors or at least put their names on the application form. In most cases, we do not ask for the research proposal, which is quite a big piece of work to prepare for the application process. What we say, we do ask for the research statement, which is much shorter, but still gives us an idea what methodology you want to do as part of your research application, <clears throat> what questions you would like to um, answer within your research as well, um, and how um, your experience and um, whether you want to conduct correlates to the um, expertise that we have within that department and which academics um, you eventually want to collaborate with, <clears throat> because that will massively, massively speed up the application process. And that the application will be reviewed by those um, identified academics or potential supervisors, and they will read your research um, statement um, and get in touch with you and discuss it further if needed via the email conversation, or they might invite you for the um, um, online interview as well. Uh, another question that came straight to my <laughs> inbox, uh, Olga, is whether they should spend uh, any words mentioning why they chose the UK to study. Uh, and this question is coming from a UCAS student, so. Um, not really, because um, the um, admission statement or personal statement um, at undergraduate level doesn't actually ask you to say why you have to come to the UK. We want you to tell us why you want to study that subject at our university. Why have you chosen our university and what specific um, you have you liked within that course structure, for example, or the facilities that we have for that um, faculty or uh, laboratories that we have or equipment that we use and so on. So um, again, we know that you're applying to the UK university. We don't need to find out why you have chosen UK over Canada or America. We want you to tell us why you want to study that subject program and what relevant qualifications or um, skills do you have or experience to be a fantastic student in that program. Uh, another question is, how important is our work experience and our articles publicated I just, sorry, I just lost the question. Yeah, how important is our work experience and our articles publicated on an online area? Should, should the applicants emphasize these on their personal statements? I assume this is a question for master studies because yep, I don't yep, think yep, many yep. undergraduate students will have publications. Definitely, because um, if you have already um, some publications, definitely mention that because 
that will uh, further commit your um, interest in the subject area and um, showcase um, what you have done academically um, to advance that interest. And um, that will give also a chance um, for our academics to understand how serious you are to continue studying, for example, at master's level or PhD level, if you're going, for example, into research. Um, so again, that already is a, is a great bonus that because to publish something actually requires a lot of time and skills. Um, and if you are already um, prepared to study at, let's say, PhD level with publications, that actually gives an, an amazing academic preparation or shows academic preparation um, to our um, academia. Okay, I guess uh, another question, I guess this is also coming from a UCAS student. Uh, he's saying that due to the pandemic, some of them had uh, bad grades because they had to study from home. Uh, mm -hmm. for like two, three years, but in the final year when they returned to school, their grades picked up and much they are much better than the previous years. In this case, would they have a chance uh, of being accepted to Bristol, they're asking? So the general rule is if the school, not just the students, have been quite severely impacted by the COVID situation, pandemic situation, and there is a notion that majority of students had a bit of a, an issue in terms of their grades um, in those affected years, um, your teacher will submit a reference as part of the UCAS application too, and they can actually mention this within their reference that majority of the students have been affected by the performance uh, or their performance has been affected by the uh, pandemic situation. However, um, you are academically very strong applicant and this is evident by your grades that have improved massively in the last few years and so on. Um, if you think that uh, your case is more um, isolated and individual, um, and you have extenuating circumstances, some students still continue using the extenuating circumstances um, for COVID. So you can uh, mention that as well. So again, there is a deadline for uh, submitting your um, extenuating circumstances for each university. So do that in advance, not after you have applied or the decision has been made. Uh, how can we mention why we chose Bristol if the same personal statement will be sent to four other universities? That was for master's degrees, I guess. They are uh, confusing it with UCAS personal statements. I think it's a UCAS personal statement, yes, because the statement um, is written just once. One statement goes to five universities. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to be super particular about the university. Um, however, if you do have a very, very strong preference that Bristol is your top choice, um, and yes, that, that's what you want to do, that's where you want to study, you can mention that if you want to. However, bear in mind that other universities you will be applying to will also read it and they will understand that your desire is to study somewhere else like Bristol, not um, at another university. You have to be quite careful. In most cases, students avoid putting university names. Uh, but again, this is your personal, personal choice. Uh, would it be unnecessary to give information about the high school we are currently studying at, as they can already see it from the UCAS system? On the UCAS system, we can see which school you are attending. What I would definitely recommend, I know students applying from Turkey, um, especially those students who do two qualifications at the same time, let's say you're doing the local um, uh, high school diploma, and let's say you're doing IB diploma at the same time, get in touch with us to say that actually I'm doing two qualifications and then we can um, eventually look into which school you are attending and um, give you two offers, one for the, your local curriculum as well as for the IB diploma. So you have two options in a way. But And um, sometimes students forget to mention that they're, for example, um, attending um, a science uh, school like Fenlizezi or the Anadolu, Anatolian um, High School, because those schools give you direct entry for bachelor studies. Again, mention that um, because quite often the name of the school or when you choose the school from the qualification from the UCAS drop down menu doesn't fully list it. Um, and then the admissions team is slightly confused. Are you going to the science school or not going to the science school? So instead of like uh, being conf confusing them a bit too much or delaying the process, try to provide as much information as possible. Okay. And there are two uh, not personal statement related questions, but I will ask those anyway. Uh, for veterinary sciences, sciences, will there be a problem if I am studying standard level chemistry? He's asking because it requires higher level chemistry. 
Yes, um, on the uh, course descriptor, we do clearly publish the criteria for high level subject and standard level subjects, especially if you're applying for health sciences or engineering programs and so on. And if it does say clearly um, high level uh, chemistry is required, then we will not be able to accept standard level. Okay. And what about the life costs and the social life in the region? Well, the social life in Bristol is great, but you can explain with your <laughs> Yeah, social life is amazing in Bristol. I think our Turkish students, when we meet with them, say it's quite difficult to stay at home or in a student accommodation and focus on studies because so many things are happening and then you will meet fantastic friends that will take us to so many different events. There are so many cultural events um, happening or, or for students um, specifically um, um, around the welcome mm -hmm. week and so on. So it's absolutely amazing uh, in terms of the choice, what you can do in Bristol, let alone all the travel that you can do within the UK and um, uh, outside the UK. Um, but in terms of the living expenses, we normally say Bristol is um, about 30% cheaper compared to London. But I must say Bristol is not the most cheapest city in the UK. Um, accommodation is still quite expensive, so we definitely recommend to look into your accommodation options because you can decide uh, whether you want to stay on campus, for example, we do guarantee accommodation for all first year students or foundation year students, but then um, for your second year, third year and so on, you then kind of need to find a private accommodation um, and move on uh, with your uh, accommodation choices. Again, it depends what accommodation you choose. Some students choose quite expensive one and some students choose the mainstream option which are quite budget friendly um, so yes depends on your lifestyle but we normally say um, between 10 to 15 thousand pounds per year should be sufficient to cover your accommodation costs um, other living expenses travel arrangements shopping and things like that All right. uh, well Z a student Zeynep has a question she's saying that she's going to a German school and you know the German schools are better known for their discipline so she is basically saying that it's uh, added to her self-discipline skills. Should she mention this on her personal statement? If you think um, that it is relevant for your uh, chosen program, um, then yes, but then you have to be careful. Whatever you do, you might be an amazing athlete. You might have amazing discipline. Um, you might be um, a fantastic um, performer um, and so on whatever you mention has to be relevant to your subject choice. Right. And I think that was the last of the questions. So thank you very much, Olga, for your time and for your lovely presentation. Thank you as well. And I'm so sorry, <laughs> I was coughing a bit. I was kind of losing my voice talking too much. No problems at all, no problems at all. But I hope right, this then. is useful. Um, and then, yes, so um, my last um, slide, basically says thank you so much um stay connected here are our social media channels that you can follow and join um in different schools and faculties have their own um, social media channels as well um if you want to find out more about that and if you have any questions so here is the email address that you can uh use and get in touch uh, afterwards so i hope this was um very useful and uh, you have had your answers questions before you submit your application or at least you know where to find more information for preparing your application and writing a personal statement all right thank you very much olga thank very you lovely evening herkese iyi akşamlar arkadaşlar teşekkür ederiz katıldığınız için e, bu sunumumuzun e, kaydı youtube kanalımızda da paylaşılıyor olacak ileride referans almak isterseniz orada da bulabilirsiniz Herkese iyi akşamlar.